Hey everybody, welcome. Um, this is Mrs. Esposito's classroom and this is the epic fail of Arturo Zamora chapter five. So go ahead and find that chapter in your book and you should be following along as I read aloud. Okay, here we go. Chapter five, conspiracy theories. Aunt Tootie was making it really hard for us to prep for Sunday family dinner. Kari, did you read the paper today? She asked my mom. I can't believe there's another bid for the lot next door. Did you tell mammy? Yes, I read it, and no, I don't want to worry her. I watched Aunt Tootie pace nervously around the dining room at the restaurant while making a face like she was about to swallow an entire apple. Every day this week, she yelled at the top of her lungs. He stopped by the restaurant every day. He even invited me to lunch. Can you believe it? He invited me to lunch. And Grigo, mentiroso. Ah, no, no way. No way. Tootie, calmate. You're getting hysterical. Hearing that word sent Tootie off again. Hysterical? Hysterical. Am I the only one who cares about this family? Oh my God, there she goes again. My uncle Carlos slapped his forehead and went into the kitchen to grab a pitcher of water for the table. We were almost ready to sit down to dinner. Que pasa? Abuela asked from the other side of the room as Aunt Tootie flailed her arms around like she was painting the air. Not a mommy, my mom replied, then turned to Aunt Tootie. Tootie, you're making Mammy nervous. You need to sit down. We'll discuss this at the table. Fine, but it needs to be addressed. I know. Just sit down, please. Dang, she gets so hyster. Don't say that, the family yelled out before Brian could finish. Carmen couldn't help but giggle. Let's both yell hysterical at the same time and see what she does. That could be really dangerous, I said. There's a lot of people in here, and Aunt Tootie likes using her hands a lot. Aunt Tootie shook her head while my cousins tried to get her to calm down. Who else put in a bid, Mom? I finally asked. You don't need to concern yourself with it, Arturo. Go and wash up. We're eating in ten minutes. My mom put the newspaper on the hostess stand and went back into the kitchen to finish prepping. Before I left to wash up, I glanced at the paper and saw what Aunt Tootie was talking about. What does it mean? Carmen asked behind me. It means La Cocina de la Isla isn't the only business that wants to build on the lot next to the restaurant. Who else wants to build there? I showed the paper to Carmen. On the cover was a photo of the man in the white suit. He was holding up a sign with the same fancy lettering as the store I'd seen earlier. The words Peepo Place were written in tacky gold cursive. We've been around for 19 years. No one do deserves to expand more than us, Aunt Tootie yelled, trying to make eye contact with anyone who would listen. I, I can't believe I let him kiss my hand. I feel disgusting. Tootie, if we don't win the bid, we'll just have a new neighbor. That's all. My dad, Uncle Carlos, Martin, and Brian moved our tables toward the center of the restaurant to make one long table. Bren and Mop tried to help, but Bren somehow fell under the table and Martin, a.k.a. Jabba the Chef, stepped on him. So Arturo's little friends help out, but Pachuroso just stands there watching? I'm helping Abuela, I told him. Must be nice, Martin taunted. Must be nice. Martin was such a hater. I shook my head and went to wash my hands. When I came out of the bathroom, I saw Carmen looking at the pictures on the wall. She smiled at the one of nine-year-old me standing alone holding a basketball against my hip. My jersey was so big it looked like I was wearing a dress. I played on the 11 to 13-year-old team, and that was the smallest jersey they had. I said, now embarrassed that Abuela had put that picture up in the restaurant. You've grown a lot since then, Carmen said, and my cheeks suddenly felt like they had a really bad sunburn. Back at the table, Vanessa carefully placed each drinking glass in exactly the same position. She complained that Bren was slamming them on the table too hard. He's going to break the glasses, Arturo. Tell him to be careful. Vanessa was older than us by six months, and she ran in social circles that included girls and guys who were likely to become senators, ambassadors, and Nobel Prize winners. Bren held the glass in his hand and stared at Vanessa. What is that smell? she asked, wrinkling her nose. Bren quietly sniffed his armpits. It's Mira Bro Power Deodorant. Mira Bro was a line of really sparkly men's jewelry, tight patterned shirts and jeans, and most famously, a really, really potent men's deodorant. Only two people I know wore that stuff, Bren and Martine. My family piled around the large table as my mom brought out food from the kitchen. Vanessa brushed against Bren's shoulder as she stepped around him, which must have made him nervous because he looked like he could fall face first into the picadillo. If you want to impress a girl, Brendan, do it with this, Vanessa said, pointing to his head. Not with, with that. She scrunched her face and held her breath, avoiding any more of the funky deodorant. I quickly glanced at Carmen and we made eye contact. I think she smiled. I can't be sure because it felt like there was an organ lodged in my throat. 
so maybe it looked like I was choking instead of smiling. Almost as soon as Abuela had finished leading prayer, the family started talking about the lot situation. Okay, so what's the plan, Kari? Uncle Carlos asked. Yes, fearless leader, what is the plan? Aunt Tootie challenged. The plan, my mom began, is to go about business as usual. What? Questions and complaints fired back and forth across the table. What are you talking about, Kari? You want to do nothing? Listen, everyone. My mom stood, her hand on my dad's chair. We presented our proposal to expand. The city is still going to hold a public forum. Wilfredo Pipo doesn't change that. We are considered favorites because we are the true face of this community. Our neighbors know us and trust us. If we start trying to do something drastic and changing what people love about our place, we'll confuse the community, and then we'll really be in trouble. My family hurled more complaints across the table like we were playing a really angry game of verbal dodgeball. Kari's right. Nobody ever accomplished anything by doing nothing. I don't agree. I don't agree. Everyone turned to Tia Abuela Josefina, who almost never spoke. Don't you agree with... What don't you agree with, Tia? My mom asked. Everything. Voices erupted, and soon it felt like there was one big noise demon hovering over the dinner table. Then Abuela stood, and everyone froze. La comida se va a enfriar. It was hard for Abuela to get the words out, but she still sounded powerful. Aunt Tootie and the rest of the adults looked embarrassed. What followed was the quietest dinner we had ever had. The only sounds were the clinking of forks and spoons against plates and serving dishes. Occasionally, Vanessa would sigh heavily when she'd get an unfortunate whiff of Bren's deodorant. I could tell he was trying not to make any sudden movement so he could contain his smell. I picked at my picadillo. I rolled the olives and crispy potatoes around with my fork, wondering why my family couldn't agree on the right thing to do about Wilfredo. La Cocina de la Isla had been in my family forever. It was our second home, and we just wanted to share more of it with the town. What could Wilfredo Pipo want with this old lot? How do you spell his name? Carmen had popped up right next to my face and scared me so much that I accidentally launched a few peas at Martin. He wasn't pleased. Mop and Brent had finished eating and gotten up from the table, so Carmen slid into Mop's seat next to me. Jeez, you've got to stop springing up on me like that. Sorry, Carmen said. She had her phone in her hand ready to type. I looked out to the lot and saw Mop and Bren at the edge of the patio looking into the restaurant at me. Mop gave a thumbs up while Bren gyrated and did some weird dance move and almost fell over. I shook my head and ignored them. So let's see what we can find out about Wilfredo, Carmen said, sounding totally pumped up. I'd put your phone away if I were you, I warned. Tia Abuela Josefina will pinch your ear and take it away if she sees it out at the table. I'll be care. Carmen didn't even have time to finish her sentence before Tia Abuela Josefina swooped in, plucked Carmen's phone from her hands, and set it on the serving counter next to the urns of my family members who were here in spirit. I told you so, I said. Well, at least she didn't pinch my ear, Carmen giggled, and the sound of it made my insides feel like there was a six-pound snapper flopping around in there. Hey, I said, shaking off the funny feeling. Maybe we should sneak into Wilfredo's house and find out where he's hiding the dead bodies? I looked at Carmen, totally confused. Huh? That's not what you were thinking, she asked. I was thinking we should check out his store. That's what I was thinking, Carmen said, and tightened her lips. She looked as though she had eaten something she wasn't sure she liked. We'll go and see what kind of store he has. Maybe it will give us clues about what he plans to do with the lot if he wins. What if he's plotting a sinister takeover of Miami and we're the only ones who can stop him? Um, or... She leaned in close, squinted, and whispered, What if he's an alien sent down to probe us before the invading army attacks and eats all of our brains? I stared. Or, I said, he wants to expand his business into the lot because it's a popular location? Or that. So, Carmen continued, what's the plan? We'll go to his place together. Okay, bring your best disguise, she said like it was the most normal thing in the world to say. Why? I asked. Because we're going sleuthing. Carmen jumped into her original seat when Mop came back inside. He gave me a wink and a nudge, and I could feel my cheeks burning. To make matters worse, I looked over at Abuela, and she was watching me with a sly smile. She raised her eyebrows up and down like she was in on a joke I didn't get. Later that night, after everyone had gone home, I stayed awake in bed, wondering what on earth Carmen meant about wearing a disguise. <laughs>